This is Mrs. O'Neill on your video notes for graphing. You should have watched that intro information on Beginner's Guide to Graphing. Here are my notes. I'm going to go through them rather quickly because you should have your own notes written out. He talked about graphs and how graphs are really charts or plots, right? They're all kind of interchangeable words. He talked about how these graphs are just the visual of the data make it easier to display, make it easier to read, make it easier to see these patterns. So again, he talked about this um, Keeling data, and it was a long, long list of information, and he said, well, that doesn't really help us. So what helps us is to put all of that information, all those lists of data, into some kind of graph, and it makes it easier then to see these patterns. And that's what a graph really helps us do, is to figure out any kind of patterns and makes it easier to analyze the data. He talked about five different types of graphs. And then, of course, he was talking about some examples. So one example was ice cream sales according to their month and the average temperature. And then he talked about the elements of a graph, and he talked about the x and the y axis. He talked about that origin, and I want to remind you that that origin doesn't always have to start at zero, zero, depending on the size of your graph, especially uh, when he got into the next video on how to graph by hand. If your graph takes up the whole paper, you want to make sure that your data takes up the whole paper. If you only use quarter of that graph paper, it's going to be hard to understand and hard to look at that graph information. So depending on the size of your paper, depending on the, your grids and how many boxes you have or how many squares he calls them, is going to help you um, figure out how to actually put that information on that graph paper. He gave you an example of a graph and he asked you to find those errors. Again, pause the video and you can look over what I have listed. So you should have also watched that intro information on graphing data by hand. So here again are my notes. He talked about graphing data according to fertilizer in grams and plant growth. He talked about those independent and dependent variables and why they are the way they are. He said, okay, now looking at our data, how are we going to graph this and why? He said a scatter plot would probably be the best because it was two data sets talked about again the important parts of the graph and where things would go. Then he talked about those grid lines and again you might want to pause the video, look over my information and make sure you're understanding how you're going to do it mathematically. How are you going to divide the range of those squares and figure out what each of those lines are going to represent or squares or boxes. Everybody uses different uh, terminology there. He said this is what his graph then looked like. So if we look at that x-axis, nice and labeled with units, we look at the y-axis, again, nice and labeled with units, gave it a nice title, and again, look at the range. He does not start the origin at 0, 0, and he doesn't label every single line. But if this was his graph paper and this is how many squares he had available, he's going to take that range and he's going to spread it out to make the graph look so nice on the, on the grid that he has available to him. He, he added his data points and then he added what he called the line of fit. I like to call it the best fit line. And again, this is your average of that data. Now this I don't really like too much because we're either going to have data that looks just like a curve or we're going to have data that looks just like a line. We're not going to have this line and then this curve at the end. I'm not actually liking that. However, in college, uh, you might actually uh, figure out some data, some plots of data, some points on your graph are not going to be good at all and you can actually get rid of them. So sometimes that actually happens. Um, so in this case, that's what I would look at. I, we would either look at this as a straight line then the curve and what's going on here as far as plant growth and how much fertilizer. Um, I'm going to look at this and go, well, maybe up to a certain point it doesn't matter how much additional fertilizer you use. Your plant is going to grow the same. So at a certain point, you don't want to put excess fertilizer in because then it's going to be a waste of money. So that's one way to look at this data. Or like I said, in college, those data points might not actually look good at all. Maybe they're, they're not worth it at all. So for our purposes, it's either going to be a curve or a line graph. So on to your packet of notes. If you don't have them out, pause the video and get them out. So first section is about graphing and analyzing data and of course vocabulary. So repeat after me again silently if you're in class or at home uh, you can repeat loudly. So dependent variable, direct relationship, equation of a line, 
graph, independent variable, indirect relationship, slope, x-axis, x-intercept, y-axis, y-intercept. Now this time we're going to do the vocab a little bit differently. Instead of using your book, I'm actually going to have the definitions on the following slides. So pause the video, write down the definitions. The other thing I want to bring to your attention is you're not going to have a quiz on just these vocabulary. However, you're going to need to understand and maybe use the terminology on your graphing quiz. So it's still really, really important to know this. So I'm just going to click away. I'm going to show you the word and then I'm going to kind of count to like five. So make sure you pause it and uh, write down the definitions. So hopefully most of those make sense and most of those are a review of what you've learned maybe in a math class. So pause, make sure that you fill in the blanks and then play the video to hear my words. And remember, read as you write. So again, we're interpreting some graphs. And again, graphs are used to show that relationship between different sets of events. So let's look at some weird graphs that you're not used to seeing. The first one I call the bathtub. It says this graph depicts the water level in a bathtub with respect to time. My first question is what's missing? And hopefully you'll look at this and go, well, I don't know. What's the water level units? What's the time units? Is this over the course of a whole day? Is this over the course of a whole week? Is this a course of, you know, the hour that it takes to take a bath. We're not sure. So that's really important that it doesn't have what's missing. And the title, we'll let it go by saying the bathtub, but again, it should really be your uh, uh, independent versus your dependent variable. So now let's think about what it's happening here. So why don't you pause the video and then try to think of what the heck would be going on, what is going on with this water level over the course of time. Hopefully you've paused it and you've thought about it. So now you're going to read my description. So again, I'm going to show you bit by bit what's going on there. So pause and read, pause and read, pause and read. And hopefully that makes sense. And maybe your interpretation might be slightly different than mine. So again, just kind of abbreviate or summarize that synopsis. So in number two, again, driving to school, again, what's missing, right? We have a rate, but we don't know. Is that miles per hour? Is that kilometers per hour? We can, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's uh, centimeters per second. We really don't know. Again, driving, I'm thinking miles per hour, but you don't know. Uh, again, the title is okay, but uh, again, because it's a different kind of graph, we'll let it go, and there's no units on the time. So now I'm going to ask you to interpret the graph below. You are to write your own brief synopsis, really what's happening in the graph below. And again, it could be short and sweet. I think I give you a few lines to write that. So pause and try to figure out what each of these lines would represent while you're driving to school. Hopefully that was kind of fun, but different, right? Number three, a woman climber. So pause the video, read what's happening, read what's happening, and then would you choose A, B, C, or D as your answer? I would choose A, but you might have a different thought, and that's okay. Whatever you wrote down is fine, or you can actually, if you chose B, you might want to just cross it off and write down A. But again, it's going to be our interpretation, and as long as you can give me a reasonable explanation as to why, uh, you would be, you would be, that would be fine. Okay, so now how about reading some graphs? So again, I'm going to ask you to pause. I'm going to ask you to look at the data, the graph. Ooh, this is a bar graph this time. And come up with an answer for A, B, and C. Hopefully, if you've paused, hopefully you have an answer to A, B, and C. Now you can check your answers with my answers, and hopefully those make sense. Again, either correct your mistakes or uh, just make sure you get down the answers somehow. And hopefully this makes sense. Now you're going to make your own graph and then analyze that data. 
So we're going to make some data. You're going to have to make it, actually. You're going to have to graph the data, and then you're going to analyze that data. So read the instructions here. You are going to need a partner. And want to make sure that you understand that you're going to be graphing from, I believe, 2 seconds all the way to 25 um, seconds. So make sure that you're consistent with your speed. So if you're going to go really, really fast in the 2 seconds, you want to be consistent with that speed when you get to the 25 second section. Okay, so I gave you little boxes there. Do the best you can by staying in those boxes. So hopefully you have a partner and you're going to make those dots and again be consistent with your speed. Now, what is your independent variable between those dots and time? Hopefully you came up with time. What is your dependent variable? number of dots. Again, the time is going to, your, your number of dots is going to depend on the time that's given to you. That's kind of how I like to look at it, right? The number of dots that you make are going to depend, that's why that's the de dependent variable, on the time that's allotted. So make sure you have a graph title. And now make sure you have your label of your X axis and your Y axis. And remember which one goes where, include your units. So now pause the video, make sure you can come up with the scale of your x-axis. I give you your x range as an example, but you have to figure out what your y range is. Same thing for, again, graphing that data. I'm giving you the information on how to do it uh, for your, um, which axis do I give you? I'm sorry, your x-axis, there you go. I can, I can help you with the x-axis because I know you're going from really zero to 25 seconds, but I'm not gonna be able to help you with your y-axis. So make sure you're understanding how to do it for your x-axis. Again, pause, make sure you're doing the mathematics correct and then make sure to do it for your y-axis, okay? And again, I'm helping you here with the question marks, but you have to decide because everybody's um, data here is gonna be different. The y-axis data will be different. So hopefully you have the nice graph, hopefully you have everything labeled, hopefully you have your, again, not every single line has to be uh, marked with your range, but every two or three maybe, um, plot your data, and then use a ruler to have your best fit line. Make sure that your line goes through that y-axis because you're going to need it to come up with your equation of a line. Then answer your questions. Again, refer back to your summer assignment packet if you um, need that information. Um, there's also a video uh, that you can re-watch for your summer assignment on graphing. You can also re-watch Mr. Anderson, or you can just rewind even this video and make sure you're doing that X and Y axis correctly. Uh, but the answers to those questions, again, very, very, if not the same as your summer assignment packet. Okay, see you in class with any questions you may have for me or any of your fellow students.